so as you can see from the title, um, I'm going to talk in the same spirit as Eva was doing in, in her talk and um, highlight these models of, uh, that are behind the idea of axiom monotomy inflation. Um, this is basically going to be um, mostly based in this work that happened a couple of months ago with Gary Shu in uh, Madison slash Hong Kong and Angel Uranga in, in Metroid. So, um, so the um, basic idea here, the mo motivation, it's pretty much what Eva was saying, which will allow me to go much faster. But um, basically, it's based on the, um, on the observation that if by step two results are, are confirmed experimentally, then, then many people will conclude or will agree that, that well, we have a quantized gravity and um, the early universe uh, model involves uh, a model of uh, large field inflation. Okay, not everyone, I totally get that, but, but let me take this path and assume that this, um, these observations that Eva was also highlighting uh, are more or less, have a strong indication in the results of vice, um, hopefully some other experiments. So in particular, this conclusion that um, the process of inflation is extremely sensitive uh, to ultraviolet dynamics. It would make this whole thing exciting for someone working in string theory. It would make that embedding the model of large field inflation in a string theory is not a cute exercise. It's something that really needs to be done if we really want to know what's going on, okay? assuming all this. So <clears throat> in particular, this initial data of uh, Bicep highlighted one of these one particular model of inflation, which is the uh, chaotic inflation model with quadratic potential, um, which is nice in some senses. For instance, the fact that if we see this term, this potential term, as a small violation of uh, approximate shift symmetry, then we basically can control a lot of corrections. But as already highlighted here, we don't control all corrections. When we couple this thing to a UV completion, in principle, many other corrections can happen, and this can totally spoil inflation, okay? So an embedding of, um, of an inflation in an ultraviolet completion should tell us, I mean, if successful in, uh, embedding should tell us why this is not happening, why we will not have wild correction that will get this initial smooth potential totally crazy. Um, so in this sense, there's this other set of models based on the proposal of natural inflation in which this uh, effect is, uh, is nicer if you want because here we have an axion which is going to be the candidate for, in, for inflation, the inflaton, um, in which, well, we will also have a shift symmetry which will be broken by non-perturbative effects as quantum gravity is not supposed to like them. But then we have a periodicity of this guy which is totally exact and should be preserved always, okay? Uh, in addition, when we take this idea and we try to embed it in a string theory, because the axions come from integration of um, p-form potentials over p-cycles, there's an extra stuff. Basically, the shift symmetry in here comes from a gauge symmetry in the higher dimensions, and so when we reach the kaluza klein scale, we should start seeing this gauge symmetry where the shift symmetry is coming from. And because gauge symmetries are so powerful, this should more or less uh, serve as a cutoff of all the crazy corrections that could, one could in principle have. Um, well, the only problem here is that, as already Eva said, these this guys will have a Planck and decay constant, so we, we cannot hope to have a large excursion, a transplankian excursion of the inflaton in this sort of model in which the superpotential is generated by, sorry, the potential is generated by, um, by non perturbative effects. Now, um, here, and following again the same philosophy as the previous talk, one can combine these two ideas and go for this proposal, which is this model of axiom monotomy inflation. Okay, we basically combine chaotic inflation and natural inflation. We take an axion, we give it a mass. Now, the axion is no longer periodic. You cannot be because its potential is not periodic. Uh, but, and this allows to have a super Planckian displacement. And then the hope is, the idea is that because this whole theory remembers that there was once a periodicity for this axion, for this particle, the UV corrections cannot be crazy. Okay? So this is basically the point where I'm going to go in the following. 
of course, in addition to the um, initial quadratic potential, we'll also have non-perturbative effects that will create these modulations that Eva was mentioning. All right, so with this elegant idea, there was a bunch of early development like this um, string scenarios in which you would create this, I mean, you would engineer this fact that you have an action and then all of a sudden you break the, the veridicity. And on the other hand, um, there was this, all those parallel developments of Calopar et al. in which they thought of a four-dimensional framework in which this axiom monodromy will happen, okay? And they have a Lagrangian, it was a bottom-up approach, but they claim this, this is giving us the um, axiom monodromy that we are looking for. And then, then after that, there were a lot of other developments. So you, here you should take the first uh, slide of Eva's talk and copy-paste mentally. And uh, in particular, well, you have already seen the latest development on this. Uh, but I'm going to talk about one particular one when I think, which I think is promising, and that's um, what I'm going to devote the rest of the talk to convince you why this is a, a promising approach to uh, formulate axiom monotomy inflation. So the particular name would be after maximum monotomy inflation, and the very, very simple observation is that this axiom monotomy inflation is take an axiom, put a little thing, and give it a mass, okay? And this is something that we have done at all, at all uh, <laughs> a lot, in the whole program of modelized civilization that happened for the past decade. Uh, basically, we took axions and via superpotentials generated by fluxes or some other uh, similar ingredients, we gave them a mass, okay? Or we lifted or some other polynomial potential. So the idea, Basically, this idea is just to use the same techniques to generate uh, a uh, potential for the inflaton, okay, for an axion. So the basic aim that was behind this proposal was to get simple models because this process of model stabilization is well understood. It was over 10 years uh, creating more and more results on this, on this line. And then also to create models where SUS is spontaneously broken and so you have a clear endpoint of inflation, which gives us, well, I mean, more control over what's going on over this inflationary epoch and afterwards. But um, on, on, the, on the process of getting this, we got much more, which is what I'm going to mention in the following. Um, for that, let me take a very, very simple example. The, sim the simplest example that we could think of, of this sort of uh, models. And this is the simplest action that you can think. If you think of other P-form potentials, the simplest one is a gauge boson in higher dimensions. So instead of four dimensions, take four plus D dimensions, and then in these extra dimensions, integrate uh, over a circle your gauge boson, and then you will get a scalar in four dimensions, 101 dimensional reduction. Now, if this uh, one form in which you are dimensional reducing your gauge boson in the internal one is uh, massless, then Basically, this um, corresponds to the fact that the one circle, one circle in which you are integrating is non-trivial. And, well, this gives you, as I said before, a, a periodic, uh, perturbative shift symmetry and an exact periodicity. Okay? Now, if on the contrary, this guy is massive, okay, this one form is not, it's an eigen, eigen form of the Laplacian, but it's not a zero eigen form, okay? so the eigenvalue is not zero, then something else happens. Then this, um, this, one cir this circle, or k times it, it will not be non-trivial. It will be homologically trivial, which is something that you can think of by engineering non-trivial vibrations, as they happen a lot when we study compactifications. Okay? Here I'm not pulling out any, any, any weird um, ingredient. So what happens? If this second option is true, is that when you give a VEV, a for, the, a VEV for this four-dimensional component of the gauge boson, um, then you, um, <coughs> you switch on a field strength in internal components of your extra dimensions, and this costs energy, and this will create a potential. Okay? Of course, because you, this is proportional, the flux is proportional to the VEV of the field, the periodicity is totally broken, and the shift symmetry can only be thought of. Approximate. Um, okay, so this is very nice as an idea, but the question is, well, which kind of things you can get that 
give you realize this uh, observation. Okay, so the very simplest thing ever would be uh, considered compact extra dimensions that may, I made up of twisted tori, which are manifolds that came up in this program of modular stabilization again and again. And this twisted tori, um, which are dual to backgrounds with fluxes, they have circles which are not uh, contractible, but they, don't that they do not correspond to any harmonic one form. Basically, what you have is that you have cycles which are torsional in homology. One of them is non-contractible. N of them will be contractible. It will be trivial in homology. And then you, they are classified by these topological groups that they are not so familiar in dimensional reduction, but they are nevertheless there in general manifold. Um, so the simplest example that one can think of, again, going for minimalistic uh, approach, will be the twisted free toro that has two normal one cycles and one torsional one cycle. So k of this guy is trivial in homology. One of them is not. And then, basically, you can take this one cycle and, again, take the previous n sets. And what you will obtain is that um, the, um, the one form in which you dimensionally reduce your gauge boson sorry, will be non-closed. And the derivative will be of this form, basically will be k times a two form, which will be the internal field strength for your, for your, um, for your gay boson. So essentially, this will be what will break this shift symmetry, what will increase the, um, the energy, and will create the potential. And also, you can, by just direct computation, check that the mass of this guy uh, of the, well, the potential will be a quadratic potential with the mass being given by these quotients of radii. Okay? So in a particular limit, you will have this guy, which is much lighter than any uh, kaluza klein mode. Okay? Um, all right. So this is basically the picture. When you shift, just like the general idea of uh, axiom monotropy, when you go on one loop on the axiom, the flux goes from being zero to being non-zero. Actually, it's k times some quant times to form. And when you go two, it's 2k, and so on. And so on. Okay? Um, now, given this nice picture, which is basically what the, gives you the uh, original idea of axiom monotropy inflation in this particular way, um, the question is, do this monotropy, do this picture holds preventing wild ultraviolet corrections? Okay? Which is the big question here. Now, um, one can see that this is the case in the following sense. Um, this torsional invariants actually are behind a hidden, hidden gauge invariance of this whole system. <clears throat> this hidden gauge invariant can be obtained by taking, uh, well, taking a seven-dimensional gauge theory on four-dimensional space times a twisted three torus. Instead of a gauge boson, we can consider its magnetic dual and then do dimensional reduction of this magnetic dual in the forms that I was talking up before, like this non-closed one form, and is the um, two form, which is the, uh, the, the derivative. When you do that, you get that the uh, field strength of this uh, magnetic dual four form is of this form. And when you plug it into the kinetic term for the gauge boson, expressing this dual version, you get this Lagrangian in four dimensions. OK, so very simple. Just expand the four form in the well-defined one forms and two forms of your manifold, do dimensional reduction, and you get this. Okay, and what does this mean? Well, basically here we have a two form, which is the dual of the axion in four dimensions. And here you have a three form, which is uh, accompanying the, the two form and eating it like in a sort of a Stuckler Lagrangian for higher dimensional forms. And like in Stuckler, we have this gauge invariance in which we can shift the two form and this being compensated by a three form. Okay? Um, so this is gauge invariance is going to be sort of part of the big deal in here. Uh, it was, this is not a new Lagrangian. It has been thought of before. And importantly for us, it has been also analyzed in the context of QCD axioms, in which this sort of Lagrangian has been generalized for having not like a quadratic potential, but a general potential by uh, Duvalier and collaborators. And um, what it's important here is that also reproduce the axiom for form Lagrangian that Carlo Perens-Farbeau proposed as a model, four-dimensional model of axiom monotropy inflation. 
Okay? Basically, that was the Lagrangian that they proposed. This will be related by duality to this guy here. Uh, and finally, by uh, analyzing the multiplet structure of this reform, you can see that it's an after generated mass term for the uh, axiom or the two form, um, which is well, what, what allows us to call us F term axiom monotomy inflation. Um, so now using this, using this Lagrangian and the gauge symmetry that I was telling you before, uh, you can see that um, all the corrections, all the corrections that you can think of, they have necessarily need to be not of this form, not the general polynomial uh, divided by a UV cutoff scale, but they need to be proportional to F squared, where F is this fourth form, okay, in here. Because of that, and using the equation of motion, you get this uh, uh, shape for the corrections. And here you see that you have a suppression against the initial thing that was the most generic corrections that you could think of. Okay? So here is the, there are two things. First, the, um, the size of the corrections, they, are not, they, are, they, are, they don't go like the web of the uh, axion. They go like the... Uh, like the, uh, the scale of the potential, okay? Because here, basically, what I have is that the three-level potential. And they will be suppressed until this potential gets to the uh, UV cutoff scale. And second, you have like this initial lambda. Uh, it's suppressed, or it has an effective. You get a new effective lambda, which is basically this quantity, lambda squared divided by mu, where mu is, remember, the, uh, the mass of the, um, of the inflaton. Okay, so this is something that already Caloperans have worked out, and also Lawrence um, from the four dimensional point of view. But it's something that will happen in any uh, string modern realization that achieves this uh, gauge invariant, okay, or this like, effective Lagrangian. So this basically cannot happen because effectively we have stretched this uh, the uh, this effective. Um, this, uh, the cutoff scale lambda, and so the typical scale of variation of the corrections for these initial potentials are not this lambda, but are like multiplied by this big factor in here. Okay, so it, you can get corrections. This is not telling you you don't get corrections at all, but they need to be much smoother than initially thought. Uh, now, there is also in this Lagrangian, there's like something. Okay, sorry. Good? Okay. Um, in this Lagrangian, there's also this quantity besides the, um, the gauge invariant, there's this integer k, which has to do with this torsional invariance that I was mentioning before. This k corresponds to a discrete symmetry of the theory in, 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 in the sense that, uh, well, if I have this initial period of the axiom before giving it a mass, that what was the periodicity? Here it means that the potential, there will be k branches of the potential repeating in this fundamental period. Okay. Um, this is important because it tells you how also relating you, telling you how you can uh, jump from one branch to the other. Okay. Uh, and eventually, the fact that you can jump for the, from one branch to the other in, in terms of this effective uh, Lagrangian, it means that you can create a domain wall or a bubble that will give you from one vacuum to the other. This is interesting because eventually it will tell you that at some point when you go up, in this potential, you will, it will, you will get so much energy that eventually it will be better to nucleate the bubble and jump to the next branch. Okay. Uh, um, that will be much, that will be favor energetically. Okay, so it means that it will be a natural way of going up in a particular branch that will put a limit of e-folds that you could have in your theory. Um, so these domain walls, well, they can be analyzed from the point of view of flux compatifications. They, they come basically for looking at the brains, how they wrap cycles in manifold distortion of fluxes, and looking at the free width and anomalies that they may have. Okay? And basically, they also correspond to discrete symmetries in the landscape of vacia when you have a flux compatification. Um, okay, so that was basically higher dimensional gauge theory, but then if you want to uh, embed it in string theory, the simple thing that you would think of this massive Wilson line is to consider a brain, which uh, this higher dimensional gauge theory compactify and see what you get. 
what you're getting here is basically this sort of dirac born interaction action in which, again, you have a potential because you induce a flux continuously. And then, um, well, basically the physics is very similar to these models of D4 brain going around the twisted torus of Silverstein and Westphal. Uh, well, there's this, also this uh, effect of flattening that Eva was um, explaining at length, so let me not stop too much in here. Let me just say maybe this, there's this particular nice work of Dubosky et al. in which they look for a toy example of uh, axiom monodromy, um, in which you have this four-dimensional Lagrangian that I was describing, and they, uh, they look at the back reaction in the gravity dual, and they see that, again, you get this flattening uh, effect, as Eva was explaining at length. Okay, so beyond these massive Wilson lines, which, again, they are a very simple example, you can get another examples of axions with this after maximum monodromy in string theory. The simplest generalization is instead of taking a one form, take a P form potential, integrate over a cycle which is, uh, corresponds to a torsional cycle, and then you get exactly the same Lagrangian due to the relations between torsional groups in a uh, general manifold. Okay, well, these are the guys. And then, of course, this thing is purely topological. It's not telling you what is the mass of your inflaton. It could be as high as the kaluza klein scale. And then, well, the model building comes in to make sure that this guy, this inflaton, is much lighter than all the other models that you want to integrate out before getting the effective theory of inflation. One idea to do that is using warping, as the, these people did uh, when looking for this axiom around me in warp probe. Uh, you can also get the same thing with the... Uh, Flux compactification superpotential, like this type to be of a Witten superpotential. If you look at the, not at the usual uh, P-form potential by the duals, a two-dimensional reduction, you get the same uh, caliper server Lagrangian. And you can also get it, a, well, type 2B, type 2A, M theory. And, well, maybe perhaps the type, type 2A theory is interesting in the sense that it will not give you simply a mass. You can also get more general uh, potentials as we are used for the for the results of uh, model stabilization in type 2A, okay? So it will, you will get a range of possibilities, just also like Eva was describing. Okay, good. Um, again, when you go for fluxes, the topological quantity that is classifying these possibilities is not torsion in geometry, it's torsion groups in K-theory, but that's a technical point. Let me just go to the conclusions to make uh, Murian happy. Uh, so basically, the, what I was trying to describe you is, um, a set of particular set of models of axiom monodromy, which we believe is, goes in the right direction in the sense, uh, well, it realizes the general idea combining chaotic and natural inflation, but um, in particular reproduces very simply, very generally, and this is a very robust result that it stays in four dimensions and is based on gauge invariance that should stay for the full theory, no matter how complicated your UV completion in which, which compactification you are which is this Lagrangian of color sorbo that tells you that the corrections will happen, can happen. In particular, you will have these flattening results, but uh, they cannot be crazy, okay? Uh, as I say, it, towards model building, although I have not been in, in any particular direction of model building, the, the key point is to make the inflaton smaller than any other uh, compactification model. I, but from this example of massive Wilson lines, you see that for some choice, you could get it, and also for the other work that I briefly mentioned. So, thank you. Any questions? Yes, Eva. So, uh, this is something I, w I haven't thought about enough. Maybe you know the answer. So, as you were saying, the, these are Stuckelberg like couplings, they're reminiscent of Stuckelberg couplings, mm -hmm. but do we know of an unbroken phase that they are the, you know, symmetry broken phase of, if you see what I mean? Uh, um, I think if it were, it would you, have to You be mean like in the Stuckelberg? Yeah, I mean in Stuckelberg, of course, you can get that just as... Um, so you mean like giving a VEV? Yeah, yeah. So this thing, but by giving a VEV to someone? Well, we can, we can engineer that, but what I mean is the ones we land on just in, you know... Oh, oh, so for Stuckelberg, yes, we give a... No, no, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but for these guys, I have no idea. Yeah. Uh, okay, no, I, I didn't think. But this is a nice, it's a nice question, actually. Any other questions, comments?
answer later. Evan.